What's up guys, it's Super Ray Dizzle here, welcome back to my channel. So I think the number one concern that I get on the daily by far is the concern that I don't have access, I can't afford, or I can't get to expensive professional quality supplies. So if there's one thing on this channel that I want to prove to you guys, that is that you guys don't need expensive or professional quality supplies to make good art. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna give you tips and tricks and show you guys how you guys can draw using only common school supplies. So without further ado, let's begin. Sorry for that short intro. I just, I don't know, I just wasn't in a talking mood. So the first thing that I'm going to use today will be a composition notebook. I actually went to Walmart and in the store compared uh, just like a regular spiral notebook to a composition and surprisingly the composition notebook was twice the size and thickness So this is the clear winner for drawing plus it was really cheap Next up we are going to use the most basic pencils ever and that is a basic number two pencil And my only advice is make sure it has a good eraser And with that being said we can start our drawing now so of course, you guys already know, the first thing we're gonna start off with is an outline. And it's like, I had no idea what to draw. I mean, I could draw a face, but then all the lines would pop through. And then I realized pretty much anything that I could draw, the lines are gonna show. So that pretty much leaves me with only one choice. But before I reveal that one choice, let me put on my podcast. Today, I'll be listening to Shane Dawson's podcast. I love it so much. I usually listen to podcasts or music or watch TV or something when I'm drawing because I can't be in silence. It drives me crazy. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So since my paper has blue lines on it, anything that I draw has to be darker than the blue lines to completely cover it up. And that's honestly the trick when it comes to textured paper is you want to have it dark enough to camouflage the lines. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be drawing a spider. And I know before anybody says kill it with fire, I'm, I'm pretty freaked out by spiders myself. It's just that I think it'll be a perfect opportunity and time since it's October to draw one. So usually I edit this part out or like heavily edit it, but I've been requested lately to show the whole entire drawing process of me creating the outline and creating the details, but it's, it's not that exciting. It's usually just me like drawing, erasing, drawing, erasing, and so on and so forth. And I know proportions are just the worst thing in the world, but honestly, it's all about measuring. I use my thumb, I use my pencil, I use reference photos, and I just take my time and just do things over and over and over again until I get what I think are okay proportions. Even if those proportions are making the spider hella thick. But anyway, after we have finished the outline, which seems like years and years of redrawing and erasing, I think we can finally move on to shadows. I think you guys are gonna freak out when you see what I blend with. But first, I need to put down the shadows before I can blend, so um, I'm just gonna put a few down really delicately around the spider's body and legs just to imply that it's, it's not really big in mass. But she's still thick though. And once that's done, we can finally start blending. We will be using tissue paper, yay! <laughs> So shout out to all my homies who had to bring tissue paper to school the very first day. You guys know what I'm talking about. So in order to use this as a blending tool, it's really simple. All you're going to do is just kind of wad it up into a kind of the shape of a tortillion and just use it as so. Using tissue paper as a tortillion is so reminiscent. I haven't done it in years. Now, I would have to say a rookie mistake that I personally see often and do often is if you're using regular paper with a regular pencil, it's going to smear like crazy all over the page and you're going to have a lot of like dark smears everywhere. So constantly erase those. That way you can control your shadows. So next up, we are going to use one of the most common items in elementary school, and that is colored pencils. And honestly, I'm not gonna use like a crazy amount. You can get away with the 12 pack, which is $1. Um, I'm just gonna use gray, black, and red, and white. Those are the only colors we're gonna use today. And I really do not want those blue stripes showing through my drawing. So I'm gonna cover up pretty much everything in pure black. 
And if it's not pure black, I'm gonna go in and try to layer really, really heavy. That way we can at least try to mask some of the blue lines. Now, before we get to the next part, I want to warn you that Crayola is a very, very waxy formula. So it's gonna get a little shiny and the camera is gonna be picking up all the shininess, all the reflection. So prepare yourselves in three, two, one, and boom, there it is. What I'm doing now is basically just blending in some of the black to the red so it doesn't look as harsh. And honestly, guys, that's it. And you don't even have to use colored pencils for this. Like, if you have a Sharpie, if you have a black pen, if you have a blue pen, if you have an ebony pencil, like, the possibilities are endless when it comes to ways to, of covering up the lines in the paper. And you guys, I, I have a lot of experience of, like, not paying attention in class because I'm too busy drawing. I remember I was kind of like a bad kid in high school, so occasionally whenever I'd get detention or like, you know, whatever, um, I would draw the whole time, and it would be a really pleasant day of school for me if I just got to draw all day long, because that's what I wanted to do. And I guess it paid off in the long run, because now I'm an artist. Moral of the story, don't get detention, stay in school, pay attention. And the last thing we are going to use today will be a whiteout marker. If you don't have a whiteout marker, alternatives are like white acrylic that you can get at Walmart for 50 cents, or white out paint or a white gel pen, just even white nail polish, anything you want that's white. And I'm just gonna start putting out that whiteout pen everywhere where I want it to be extremely white, just so it implies that it's super shiny and that a lot of light is reflecting off the surface. And the best part about a whiteout pen is if you make it too clumpy or like the line too thick, you can scrape it off with your regular pencil and make it thinner. And usually you can't do that with like a regular white ink gel pen, so whiteout pens for the win. And we're just gonna clean up a little bit, add a little bit of shadows here and there, you know. And with that being said, we are ready for the final reveal. Da 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 da! Here she is, the final finished color corrected piece. Not too bad for using school supplies. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you want to check out everything that I've ever painted or drawn, you can check out my Snapchat. I mean, my Instagram here. And of course, for like behind the scenes stuff now, you can check out my Snapchat and Twitter here. And with that being said, I love you guys so much, and I will see you next video. true and today we are going to oh god what are you doing oh god please don't poop <laughs>